hey viewers over the next few weeks I think I'll be uh, starting to upload some uh, projects I've built in the past a lot of them are uh, refrigeration related but there's a few that aren't and um, well this one is it's a, a micro air conditioner built a couple of years ago maybe back in uh, 2007 2008 it's a uh, pretty darn small. I've I've never seen a, a factory built one quite this small before. It's um, 150, 120 volts, 60 hertz. Obviously, I'm in Canada, and um, well, you compare it to uh, my MacTech drill here can see it's not that big and this is only a this is only a 12 volt drill so um yeah took me about maybe 2 weeks to put together working on it on and off um your front fan is a 120 millimeter uh 120 volt fan. Um, this one here is also a 120 millimeter, 120 volt fan, and there are two uh, 24 volt, I don't know, computer fans or something like that. Even though they're not professional computers, more like I don't know, copying machine fans that uh, keep their power supplies cool your uh, condenser everything is made from scratch it's you know it's it's not uh, schematics or anything like that and insulation tape armaflex that's that's great stuff to use you can wrap that around anything I love it Here's the guts. That's obviously your your master on-off switch. Uh, your thermostat. So you set this for whatever temperature you want. And this here controls your evaporator fan speed. So that'd be a uh, full speed, 100%, and that would be off, which I would see won't do much. Um, condenser fan, this radio shack, uh, 150 volts, 60 hertz, 16 watts, and uh, as you can see I've used my non-contact tachometer, great little tool, I love it, God knows how many times I've used it, probably a couple thousand, and uh, so this fan's got a top speed of uh, 28 80 RPMs. These little ones down here, I probably can't really see them too well with the camera. I can't tell, but uh, 24 volts DC, 0 0.08 amps. Um, I think they're about 4,000 RPMs. They're identical fans. Same specs for both of them. And they run off of. Uh, that adapter down there. It's a 24 volt DC adapter. Just uh, wired in with the with the on off switch in the front. Um, the compressor, so I've got some specs up here. It's an LG compressor. And the bottom one right there. An NR45HAQG. Uh, it's got its capacity at minus 23.3 degrees Celsius for watts it's 502 its BTUs is 1715 uh, power consumption is 252 watts and its uh, BTU slash watt hours or EER -E is 6.81 so it's a fairly small compressor it's uh, 
It's a 134A refrigerant compressor. I think this locked rotor is only about nine or something, so it's very, very low, very small. As you can see, my hand basically covers the whole top of it. So it's uh, just a little guy. Um, evaporator was actually out of a uh, refrigerant recovery machine. It's two rows. Good size for this little air conditioner. And uh, this one here, I can't remember what it what it was out of, but it's uh, it's taller, and it's a uh, it's lo it's longer this way, but it's only one row, and it uh, it does the trick. Lots of airflow through it with this 120 millimeter and these two. Uh, high-powered 60 millimeter fans. Um, a homemade uh, water pan made of made of uh, aluminum. Follow it there. So basically any condensation will just drip out right there. Um, the refrigerant in it is a 290 which for those of you who may not know is actually just propane and for those of you who are wondering if uh, it's dangerous using a, a flammable gas as a refrigerant it it is but under very rare circumstances propane will not combust without oxygen and in a refrigeration system there should be no oxygen because you uh, bring it down into a deep vacuum before it gets charged and um, that's actually what I have in my homemade heat pump for the past five years or more and I've never had a problem using propane as a refrigerant it's um, R22 is actually propane but just with a, a fire suppression agent mixed in I think it's like R125 or something like that so the uh, performance is actually very spot on with our 22 and uh, 290. Um, so let's let's turn this thing on. I'll have to put the the cover back over the top, otherwise your air is not going to go through your canister. It's just going to blow at the top. And same for your evaporator. With my gauges on, I can only cover it up so much. But it'll it'll suffice for this video. So Got my amp probe and uh, read the uh, inlet temperature and the outlet and your uh, and gauges for the pressure. So right now it's there's no compressor, just just your fans. Lots of air flow off of them. And this one will only go when I actually turn this up. These 120 millimeter fans, this one does about 3,000 RPMs. Well, actually, right there, 3,070 RPMs. And it's, uh, it's like 105 CFM. So it's not bad for a little fan like this. There goes your compressor. You can hear the the vapor going through it. Cover back on. Pressure should be very similar to uh, R22 as well. Boat. I don't have a port for the discharge, but your suction should be should be around uh, 50 or so. Mm. I actually haven't checked the gas in this thing for quite some time. 
but that should start to come back up as it uh, the system gets going and it is actually steadily climbing Green, the green one is your uh, for your R22. So, for those of you who want to know an actual uh, temperature on the gas, there, just look at the green one. And that's about 21 degrees Fahrenheit and climbing. The whole system, I just. Got some alligator clips so I can get an amperage rating. It's almost nothing at all. 2.5 amps. And that will go lower if I uh, throttle back the uh, evaporator fan. Your inlet temperature, T1, and your uh, outlet. Too. Measuring it right off the evaporator there. And there. Obviously, the fan at full speed, the difference is going to be uh, not as great as if I throttle back. And that's the same for any air conditioner. More airflow means less time for the air to cool off as it goes through your evaporator. There we go, we're up to 50 psi. Up to 51, and actually still climbing. That's about 27 degrees uh, on the gauge there for the R22. It's nice to know that this thing doesn't have any uh, micro leaks in it. it. Hasn't lost any gas over the years of being uh, dormant in storage. Of course, I'm losing some, losing a little bit of air around the side here, but there's lots of uh, heat coming out the back. If I throw this back a bit, your temperature difference will become greater. A good inlet and outlet temperature difference for uh, uh, a window air conditioner between 20 and 25 degrees Fahrenheit is a good temperature difference for one of those. So after throttling this back, I'm already getting a getting a better difference. Of course your amperage will go down and your pressure might a little bit as well. Not as much load on the system. So about a 15 degree spread there. And it's still a decent amount of airflow. But back that off a little more. It'll uh, increase even more. And it's very quiet. A lot of my projects don't really have a use, although you could stick this in a, a small a small room and it would probably keep it at a decent temperature. I mean, we're not looking at a lot of capacity with something this small, but uh, it would make it tolerable. Um, yeah, so a lot of my projects don't really have a purpose. They're just something to do in my spare time. And I love building things and tinkering. And uh, over the next few weeks, 
you're going to see uh, a lot of things I've done over the years. I've got about uh, 12 or 13 projects uh, to upload. So there should be a there'll be more to come. So there's a 20 degree spread. Now I I back this off a lot. I get a really big spread off it. I get down into the 40s. Pressure's come down a little bit. 48. Hardly nothing. My my main computer probably draws that much off the mains. probably won't see any water on the evaporator because it is winter and there's very little humidity in the air. And that's probably about as best it's going to do for such a small system. With my fan, or my fan's actually a little too slow there. If I crank it, crank the fan up. Look at her go now. Good pressures. That's what you want to see on a system with R22 or 290. About 58 to 60 suction. And about anywhere between 150 and 250 for your discharge. I don't know what it is on this, but uh, it's probably not that high. Probably around 175 or something like that. Oh yeah, lots of airflow. Nice and cold. Just what you want to feel during the hot, hot, uh, humid summer months. there but none none off your suction line on the compressor which is good you don't want to have liquid going into your compressor just uh just cool vapor to help keep it running cool um yeah I'm gonna run capacitor down the bottom there. Kind of see, a little rusty, just the second hand one, but brings your compressor amperage down and actually improves its efficiency a little bit. Oh yeah, see as I open as I open the top up, my suction my suction pressure uh, goes way up was up to 70 there when I put the cover back on. Anyway, this is the first of a series of uh, videos on projects I've done. Thanks for watching. Keep an eye out for more to come.